thank you for the sponsors of this uh, of this webinar, uh, sharing knowledge with the uh, with the participants, especially young architects. Thank you. Yes, architect, we know that you're so busy, and everyone right now just wants to hear and get an interview with you. We are so honored to have you here as our guest speaker. Right now, the floor is yours, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, architect Felino June A. Palafox Jr. Take it away, architect. The floor is now yours, architect. Yeah, thank you. So um, uh, this this pandemic is uh, it's an opportunity to apply in our country the best uh, practices in the world for architecture, urban planning, interior design, and 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 professions for the built environment. As Churchill said, "Never let a good crisis go away." So whether it's an act of God or act of nature, this pandemic gives us the opportunity to correct our mistakes uh, in architecture, urban planning, urban development, and so on. And, and glad to be here and, and reshaping our cities, buildings, and spaces well into the new world order. The new world order started on March 16, when we had our lockdown. So what we're doing now, we architects, we're trying to redefine architecture and how we could adjust this pandemic and, and also our building codes and, and other codes. We should be more uh, selective now in, in selecting our uh, building materials, starting from the roof, the walls, the building envelopes, and so on. And that, uh, that are sturdy, it can withstand all uh, strong winds and so on. And since we're working from home, even minimizing the, the noise from the roof or for a big big envelope. So we have such materials that we can, we can work on and choose from. And, and we can uh, maybe instead of just giving a narrative, uh, we, are, we prepared some uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, images and a 3D animation afterwards. And I can, uh, I can speak um, voice over this uh, presentation. Architecture, urban planning, reshaping our cities, buildings, spaces, well into the new world order. And global best practices. This is a vision for Paris smart city by 2050. So they're looking long-term already. You can see vertical urbanism with, with green architecture. And this one in, also in France, Arboricole. Biophilic buildings with, uh, with agriculture in the urban landscape. So this is the future of our cities. This one is in Milan, 20,000 trees and plants across pair of towers can transform approximately 44,000 tons of carbon dioxide into oxygen each year. Of course, you have to have good waterproofing so that you can have your vertical gardens. Do Singapore in, uh, with uh, residential towers, 100% open space because the building footprint that took the open space from the ground, they put it on the roof. Again, having gardens and ra rainwater harvesting, you must have good waterproofing. In San Francisco, by Felix City, a city infused with abundance of nature. Parks and open spaces are the lungs of the city, and it will help also our immunization from, from future epidemics. So these are very uh, uh, important components of the city. When we are not too busy at Palafox, we take pictures of the uglification of our cities and come out with architectural perspectives, urban design perspectives, how they should look like, and I call them postcards from the future. Instead of complaining in words, we put them in drawings, like Pasig River before at today, and postcards from the future. The Rockwell Center, we, we, we work in the Buster Plan and architecture, first five towers, making Pasig River more, more walkable, with pedestrian bridges, bicycle bridges, ferry boats, and uh, a, a river walk interconnecting what we propose also for uh, lakefront walk around Laguna Lake 
and Pasig River, 27 kilometers, then the 190 kilometer Manila Bay Walk. Next slide. So this is a polluted river in Manila, Estero de la Reina. So we took pictures of it and came out with a postcard from the future, how it can look like. And, and this is in San Juan River. We were uh, appointed to do the urban planning, comprehensive land use and zoning of San Juan. And I was asked to present this uh, smart city in the future in Berlin when they heard about our plan for San Juan as a smart city of the future. Again, the San Juan River today and how it may look like in the future. So there are possibilities. This is a, a creek and we, we did a green architecture for the urban poor and having the, the promenade along the creek and interconnecting the neighborhood. And North Harbor housing today, we can just improve the facade and make it more neighborly with, with, with plants and so on, and balconies, which is good for, us, uh, for addressing pandemic as well. San Pedro, we also won the, the urban planning of San Pedro for its redevelopment, so the road can be more walkable, you have more shades, outdoor dining, and, and vertical gardens on the walls. Uh, Ilocos Norte, we're fortunate to be doing the tourism master from Ilocos Norte, but presents like this, there are nice uh, tourism destinations there, but they are not accessible. So we put boardwalks so that it's even wheelchair ready for the tourists. Boracay, they use our plans for after Boracay was closed down for its uh, rehabilitation. So they are using our plans uh, for Boracay, Boracay the future, making most of the waterfront. And the landing today and in the future. So it really looks like a, a resort island. Boracay today and postcard from the future. Open up the, the uh, seascape. Boracay today, improving just the roads, internal roads. Boracay the future. And Boracay today, you protect the sand. So what happened there, uh, when you put a concrete on the sand, the sand will become mud. So the sand took thousands of years, sifting sands, because the direction of the wind is different at night, different during the day. So the boardwalk we propose is elevated. So you don't block the shifting sand. And hopefully the buildings will open up the ground floors. So you have cross ventilation. The breeze from the sea can go inside also the island. And bikeable, walkable. Still a future for Boracay. And bikeable. San Vicente Palawan, we also want the design, uh, tourism design for this. And setting back from the shoreline, 50 meters in vertical clearance, about four meters, no, no livable spaces below four meters, because the tsunami or storm surge in the future, it's four meters high. And we won an award from the Royal Town Planning Institute of London as one of the top eight best master plan projects in the whole world during that year. Uh, still in San Vincent de Palawan. We're able to convince the landowners to set back by 150 foot high water mark or 50 meters. 20 meters in Boracay, it's even very difficult to implement it. Or 10 meters along Pasig River, it's even very hard to implement it. To so make it walkable and every 400 meters, everybody has access to the, to the beach, to the sea. Even in a wheelchair, you can go to the beach. So it's exclusive. Uh, this is a project we did for a Airport. So this airport is uh, inspired by indigenous architecture, natural ventilation, and 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 and, and lighting. This is we are not just uh, uh, protecting the environment; we are enhancing it. So these are elevated cottages interconnected with elevated walks, coconut mansions, also in that island that we designed. So we combine planning and architecture, even interior design, artisan village, so you give livelihood for the indigenous people of that island. And Malkapuya Coron in Palawan, you can see here at the still, so encourages more, uh, uh, more uh, natural ventilation and natural lighting. 
even the interiors. We, we did the interiors, even the design of the furniture. Is our, we have our interior design group in our company as well. So relating the outside, the interior, the exterior, and, and planning with nature. Yeah. So a restaurant, again, you don't have to use air conditioning. Anyway, you get the sea breeze coming to it. And this one, we, we're fortunate again to the uh, urban planning and architectural concept for the province of Pampanga, dredging Pampanga River, make it navigable, and reorient the buildings to face the river and with promenades for walking and bicycles. And all our projects, we propose all our road cross section should be one third for people, bicycles and pedestrians, one third for trees and landscaping, and one third for the moving traffic lanes. Because it takes at least 10 trees to recover the oxygen out of the carbon monoxide per car. And we had proposed this a long time ago, elevated walkways the whole length of EDSA, and, uh, uh, and, and pedestrian and, and, and bicycle lanes with some vendors, so that you have 24 hours uh, a day, you feel, you feel safe walking that because the vendors will with their eyes in the public realm, possibilities for EDSA also. And now they're doing the dedicated busways, which were proposed many decades ago. And we propose this elevated walkways, bicycle lanes in congested streets, the lungs of the city. We are also fortunate to do the urban master plan for Clark and introducing again, walkable, bikeable, livable, more lungs of the city, parks and open spaces, integrating places to live, work, shop and dine, learn and worship. So abundant green and open spaces for Clark Freeport South, Aerotropolis and, or, uh, and airport driven city, uh, this is, we also won the Metro Davao Urban Design, Urban Master Plan for eight local governments in Davao, uh, eight cities and municipalities. So making it walkable, even the pattern of the pavements and benches are influenced by Mindanao, Mindanao arts. With so many trees, so uh, walking and biking should be the first two modes of transportation. Again, coastal prominent, more outdoor dining. Our studies at Palafox, we are for restaurants, we're now specifying that 30% of the floor area should be for kitchen, 20% for indoor dining, 50% alfresco outside. So it reduce the possibilities for infection. So you have sunlight and natural ventilation. This is a project we did in Monterey, California, more pedestrian streets and the shops and dining areas facing the pedestrian streets. I think this is the future of our retail and shopping. The big enclosed malls, which are introverted, they, they have to be more extroverted, uh, uh, fronting the streets, especially pedestrian streets. So progression plan, we did the master plan also for, for the former airport in Iloilo. Again, pedestrian streets and the shops facing the pedestrian streets. And this is again for Clark Freeport zone, you can see it's walkable, bikeable, more kiosks. So there's more ice in the public realm. When there are more ice in the public realm, less, less criminality. In fact, sidewalk cafes started in Paris. And criminals are scared when there are more ice on the street. Criminals are scared with, uh, of windows because the window is a potential witness. They are not scared of high walls because you can commit crimina criminality inside the high walls. You prevent uh, cross ventilation. You can draw a grenade, no witnesses. Look what happened in Marawi. There were shabu factories and, arm, uh, and armories inside those uh, high walls, and they were not discovered. And it was very difficult for our troopers to recover Marawi from the terrorists because of those high walls. We have our uh, sustainable green uh, advocacies, green architecture, green urbanism, green technology, green energy, green interiors, hopefully also green furniture, infrastructure, manufacturing, transportation, purchasing, green jobs, and green sustainable development. And green architecture, this is our design for a tall building with sky gardens. So all of these were designed before the pandemic. So uh, you don't have just uh, gardens on the ground floor, but different floors of this tall building, we have garden. Also here, we, we want to design competition for this particular project, we won first, second, third prize because we submitted three alternative designs because the 
competition brief did not limit the number of, of submittals. So we were the only architects who submitted three designs and we got first, second, third prize. This one is bringing back the core principle of wind towers in the Middle East before they discovered oil. So you collect the breeze and the wind from above, ventilate the rooms below, and cross-ventilate the whole building. And this is, we, we designed 11 schools in Bam, Iran, after a big earthquake. And again, we, we, we were inspired by the wind towers of the Middle East, and collect the wind from above, cross-ventilate the rooms, and I'm told during summer, the temperature, temperature goes down by 20 degrees in summer, and 10 degrees in autumn. So again, practicing the principles of green architecture. I like the quotation from Daniel Burham, who planned Manila in 1905, Chicago and Baguio in 1909. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood. Make big plans, aim high in hope and work. Remember that a noble logical diagram, once recorded will never die. But long after we're gone, will be a living thing asserting itself with ever-growing insistence. Remember that our sons and daughters are going to do things that would stagger us. Let your watchword be order and be called beauty. He wrote this while he was planning Manila and Baguio. And again, the quotation from Churchill, never let a good crisis go to waste. And we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. And I paraphrase this, we shape our built environment, and our environment will shape us. And I published, authored, written, published more than 700 articles and three books. This, I wrote it in my term paper in UP uh, in 1973. I was 23 years old, a master's degree. Development is not worthy of the name unless it's spread evenly like butter and a piece of bread. Now they call this uh, inclusive development, inclusionary zoning. So everything we do is pro Deo, Patria, et Terra, for God, country, and planet Earth. So I think we all like to live in master plan and design environment-friendly buildings, communities, and cities that should be smarter, resilient, livable, better connected, more accessible, walkable, bikeable, safer, better lighted, more convenient, Cleaner with mixed income, cross-generational uh, uh, neighborhoods and communities with mixed-use developments that will integrate uh, um, places to live, work, shop, dine, and worship uh, with, uh, with wellness centers and healthcare centers and leisure with some 24-hour cycle activity centers. And this is our team in Makati. We also have offices in Cebu and Davao right now. And, and thank you very much. And this is our office today. Only 12 of us are coming to office. The other 90 are working from home. We have uh, three, three the animations of our most recent projects, which we did before the pandemic. But the principles we are using now uh, in the new world order, we have, we, we implemented them here by borrowing the best practices in the world. So Clark Aerotropolis, 4,000 airport driven city, smart city. It's 4,000 hectares. It's larger than Makati. But the 2,000 hectares is for the airport. So uh, just to compare it, the Clark International Airport is more than 2,000 hectares. Manila International Airport is only 600 hectares. And soon now it will accommodate more than 80 million uh, arrivals. So we divided it into seven districts. So the North Gateway and Southern Gateway are, the land uses are airport-related land uses. So we have a smart city, technology city, industrial district, uh, central park and civic center, life center and leisure center. And again, it's all mixed-use development, even with the, with the thematic. And, and, and you can see here that uh, we have integrated also transportation corridors. Uh, circumferential, and this will be very well connected with uh, very well connected with the rest of Luzon, a railway from Metro Manila, and also dedicated busways. So this is the Northern Gateway with the airport. So these are airport-driven, uh, airport-driven land uses. 
So again, in here, uh, we have uh, we have these uh, strong roofing materials, and with green roof, you have to have also good uh, waterproofing materials. So we'll have different kinds of transportation, starting with walking, cycling, and public transport. And what's happening now during this pandemic, many cities in the world, including the Lady Mayor of Paris, 15-minute city. So every destination, place to live, work, shop and dine, learn and worship, and retail and shopping should be within 15 minutes to walk or bicycle in public transit. You can see again the white sidewalks here, the greeneries, and outdoor dining, alfresco dining. The Southern Gateway District, also airport-related land uses, but it's also mixed use, integrating again the different uses, more bikeable, safe for the pedestrians, lots of open spaces, the lungs of the city. And you can see in here the integration between the, the buildings and, and the spaces outside the buildings. Urban design is anything you see outside the window in between buildings. Not many people, uh, Clark has a, a river, so uh, riverfront developments, making use of the amenity value of the river. Again, the parks and open spaces, the lungs of the cities. Elsewhere in the world, the prog more progressive cities in the world, as the population grows, they create more open spaces. Unfortunately, in our part of the world, as the population grows in Metro Manila, open spaces have been reclassified as buildable, sellable. So this is the technology smart business part. Stadsonburg Central Park and Civic Center. Stadsonburg was the original name of Clark. So we're maintaining the, the, the Civic Parade Grounds as the Central Park of the future and Civic Center government uh, offices around it. And again, the significance of, uh, of uh, very strong roofing materials and, and uh, waterproofing. So good roof depth gardens and rainwater harvesting, very good uh, waterproofing is needed there. So lifestyle district, one of the seven districts that we, we, we master plan. And I hope even the architectural typology will be implemented. In the leisure district, where you have the, the golf courses and the clubhouses, we also design a golf course community there, including the architecture of the, of the, uh, of the fairway homes and the, the clubhouse, and also a building there for uh, office tell, office hotel where you can work in, the, in your own hotel room. So leisure district, uh, you can see in here that most of the leisure activities are, are take place there. So this is the 4,000 hectares of uh, Clark Airport visit driven city. It's a free port, and and we green architect with green architecture, green urbanism, Aerotropolis, airport driven city. The next one is we're fortunate also to have one, the the planning for Pampanga, Pampanga Megalopolis. A megalopolis is several metropolitan areas and a, a, a metropolis is several cities. This is the nearest to Metro Manila where it can be a counter magnet to Met Metro Manila. So 23 cities and municipalities, you can fit three Singapores or two Hong Kongs in Pampanga. And we, we had proposed thematic land uses for the area. Well, all of them will also be mixed use developments Agropolis, agro farm, police the city, so farm oriented uh, development, uh, ecopolis, ecology, environment, and the city. Then we have our aquapolis, the water in the city, the, the Andaba swamps, aerotropolis, that's Clark, airport driven cities. So we propose four metropolitan areas, very well interconnected. And, and radial roads and open up the southern gateway of uh, southern gate of Subic, because right now you only enter Subic from the north, and integrate it with adjacent towns in Pampanga like Lubao, then a circumferential road within the province. Because some, 
some of the perimeter uh, LGUs in Pampanga, you have to get out of the province to go back to the province. So more integrated transportation. So this is the golden triangle that we call it. This will be most of the, probably the initial phases of the rapid urban development of Pampanga. So multimodal transportation. So again, bus dedicated lanes, light rail transit, the railway connected to Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon. And I hope this planning will be uh, stimulate more urban development there. Even the roads, we have bus dedicated lanes. And for that public market, again, very important, uh, uh, sturdy roof with waterproofing and, and cross ventilation. We hope we can influence also the architectural typology of the public markets. So roofing is very important here also. And this is a intermodal transit terminal for jeepneys, buses, tricycles, and maybe some car parking. Again in here, we've introduced the rainwater harvesting and, and roof garden and, and roofing materials with solar panels. Again here, you need very strong waterproofing for the roof. I hope they also get uh, articulated buses, so you have more uh, passenger capacity. And the bus dedicated lanes, busways will be the middle with, uh, with skywalks to, to cross uh, the, 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 the road. Again, this one is one third for people, one third for trees and landscaping, and one third for the moving traffic lanes, as much as practicable. So that's an aerial view of Pampanga. It's sun. So again, these are tourist information area. We tried as much practicable to, to borrow, get inspired by the indigenous architecture in that place. And again, cross-ventilated and so on. And, and, and again, the, the Pampanga River, which can be dredged. If you dredge Laguna Lake, Pasig River, and Pampanga River, it would only take 35 minutes from the mouth of the Pasig River to go to Pampanga. And the next one is, so that's, we had a smart city for Clark, then the provincial plans and Metro Davao. We also won that uh, designing competition, eight local governments, eight cities and municipalities. And uh, this was sponsored by the Mindanao Development Authority. We had to talk to all the 8,000 cities and I think interviewed more than 1,000 people and organization. So there are six kinds of infrastructure. Progressive infrastructure are the international airport, international port, international school, and international hospital standards. So we, we, we wanted to change the paradigm of Mindanao as backdoor to the Philippines to be the, the front door, the gateway to the Philippines. So these are our concepts for the airport terminal, architecture for transportation, and Metro Dabo also in the built up area getting congested so we, we encourage them to do townships outside the congested areas. Again, making most of the waterfront, the bow gulf, more promenades, more walking, more bicycles. And again, the, the, uh, the parks and playgrounds, the promenades, the international port for the bow. The Bau Gulf could be one of the largest, potentially, or the largest port in the Philippines. It's deeper than the ports of Manila. And the Celebes Sea, south of Bindanao, is becoming a very important navigational route. because It connects Pacific Ocean and West Philippine Sea or South China Sea. Cruise tourism was also incorporated there. Hopefully, after three or five years, cruise tourism will come back and also aviation.
So you can see the very well landscape, walkable, bikeable, because plants really grow in, in Mindanao. So more cures, again, more ice in the public realm, it also prevents the discouraged criminality. You can see again the, the paving patterns influenced by Mindanao architecture. And uh, the night market in Rojas Street, in, where they close at night, we propose it to be elevated so it can become a 24-hour night market. Okay. You can see that the trees and uh, Chinatown, urban renewal for Chinatown in, in Davao. Intermodal transit terminal for jeepneys, buses, and hopefully it will be interconnected with the Mindanao Railway. Again, the architectural typology is influenced by Mindanao architecture. So you can integrate architecture and planning. The built environment. Elevated walkways, very well landscape, activated. So encourage people to, to, to use the sky bridges and even handicap friendly, even in a wheelchair, you can cross, you can use the skywalk. Very well landscape, elevated. We contributed an architectural design for the bridge between Samal Island and mainland Davao. Because most of our bridges are designed by contractors and engineers. Elsewhere in the world, they use architects to design the bridges with, with, uh, with viewing decks, pedestrian lanes, bicycle lanes. The cross section of the road again will have planting strips. Dedicated bus lanes, car lanes, and truck lanes. And hopefully they will also put a light rail transit beneath it. Again, more pedestrian lanes, bicycle lanes. And we elevated it also so that even cruise ships can do, go underneath the bridge in, in the Bow Gulf. So I hope we architects will also be invited to design bridges, architecture of transportation, not just leave it to contractors and engineers to design them. Again, this is like a inspiration that just like the wings of an eagle about to fly and Mindanao arts and architecture. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share and, and thank you on the line for sponsoring this is free seminar for us architects and for me the opportunity to share. Thank you. And thank you archi architects and participants for taking time to listen with this sharing on architecture, urban planning, well into the new world order. Thank you.